two teams of scientists and engineers operating the twin rovers called Spirit and Opportunity have driven together over 25 miles of sand dunes in and out of a dozen craters and climbed hills hundreds of feet high to analyze the layers of deposits. And they've also stopped to admire the views and take photographs. The scientists have scraped rock surfaces, microphotographed their texture, and analyzed their molecular composition. In February of 2004, a month after landing, I had the privilege to observe mission operations at the Jet Propulsion Lab, JPL, in Pasadena, California. The, the two rover teams had twin facilities on different floors, and they lived and worked in the time zone of their assigned rover. Because the Martian day is longer than Earth's, that means they reported for work about 40 minutes later each day. The main science meeting room was darkened so they could orient to what they called Mars local time. Each team had about 75 scientists and research students organized into science theme groups, mineralogy and geochemistry, soils and rocks, geology, atmosphere. They were arranged at their own tables and they gave presentations to the group, interpreting what they were learning and what they'd like to do tomorrow on Mars. The long-term planning group, sitting off to one side, reviewed the overall mission engineering objectives, measures of distance, the number of images, and instrument analyses, and how these goals would affect tomorrow's plan. In the words of Steve Squires, the principal investigator of the Murr mission, this has been the first overland expedition on another planet. Applying the rover's tools at chosen spots along the Martian landscape, we've learned how water has altered the chemistry of the soils and rocks of Mars, and we've found places similar to where life thrives on Earth. <laughs> 